Welcome back everyone, it's Charlie. This is gonna be my new Mandalorian Season 2 Grand Admiral Thrawn video. There've been a lot of people that have been asking when he's going to come into the live action series. There were some rumors earlier this year and some stuff that Giancarlo Esposito said in a recent interview that made it seem like there are other big bads, other big villains that they'll be introducing in the future of the series. I'm doing videos for all the episodes this year, so if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all those. We'll do a giveaway for Disney Plus memberships. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave all your Thrawn theories on the video. Careful for spoilers for everything that's happened on The Mandalorian so far. Just starting at the beginning here, I got a lot of questions before Season 2 started about which new characters the show was going to introduce into live action because we already knew that Ahsoka Tano and Bo-Katan would be coming from the Clone Wars and the Rebels TV shows. So of course it stands to reason that other major characters from those shows would eventually show up in the live action series as well. Dave Filoni was the showrunner for those TV shows. He's also one of the showrunners and executive producers on The Mandalorian. So he's usually the one that's responsible for plucking the animated characters and bringing them into live action. He was played by Lars Mikkelsen, Maz Mikkelsen's brother on Star Wars Rebels. He did a fantastic job. You could actually bring him on as the live action version of Thrawn and just paint him blue. It's the dead eye stare that gives it away. There were a lot of rumors that they'd be doing a live action version of Grand Admiral Thrawn eventually on one of the new shows because there's so many new Disney Plus Star Wars series they're developing. And as we've seen so far on The Mandalorian, the only big bad that we know about is Moff Gideon. And Giancarlo Esposito has done a fantastic job with him. His character is mostly inspired by Darth Vader. The references are pretty obvious in the way his black armor looks, his black space cape, his personality, his methods, killing subordinates that displease him left and right, classic Darth Vader move. He said that all those references are intentional and he loves every minute of it. The Mandalorian series takes most of its inspiration and its references from the original trilogy of movies and what happened during the original trilogy. We're introduced to Darth Vader in A New Hope as the main villain, but then we learned that there's a higher power that he answers to during Empire Strikes Back, the Emperor, who's really pulling the strings. Recently, Giancarlo Esposito did a new interview after episode four this past week answering a bunch of questions from the Empire side of this overarching story in the series. What does Moff Gideon want? What is his grand plan? What's going on with the Dark Troopers and Baby Yoda's blood, the midichlorians that he's using in his cloning experiments? During that interview, he teased a couple of big ideas that I'd never seen him or anyone else talk about anywhere before. These are a couple of his quotes that I'm just reading here. He says, when people flow out of control and there are all these different moths who've been assigned to different areas to be wardens of, isn't there one person or someone that may have guidance over all of them? Then he said that those questions are answered on the show and goes on to say what some of his methods are and referencing the Dark Troopers, calling them super soldiers, suggesting that Moff Gideon wants to save the galaxy. Obviously all villains think of themselves as the heroes of their own stories. He's like the Gus Fring of Star Wars. But then he also raises another really interesting question. Also, why does Moff Gideon know everything about what's going on everywhere? He has some kind of incredible intelligence source. So he's kind of implying that there are other assets, other big things, other big villains out there, other more powerful people in the galaxy that we just don't know about yet. Grand Admiral Thrawn is one of the few characters powerful enough and smart enough to orchestrate galactic events on the kind of scale that Giancarlo Esposito is talking about. And also think about it this way, it's kind of strange that Moff Gideon seems like he's the big bad at least right now, but he's only using an Artican's class light cruiser as his main capital ship instead of a full-blown Star Destroyer. I mean, Star Wars loves to sell new toys, which is why they're always trying to introduce new kinds of ships and characters through the Mandalorian like the Razor Crest, but there are a lot of different ways that you can modify powerful capital ships like Star Destroyers to make them feel different enough to make kids want to spend money on them. And for those of you that didn't watch the Clone Wars or Star Wars Rebels TV series, Dave Filoni is the one who brought Grand Admiral Thrawn back into official canon after Disney bought Star Wars. Originally, he was created by Timothy Zahn during the Heir to the Empire trilogy of books back in the 90s. I loved reading those books so much because at the time, they were like the first big new Star Wars story during a period in history when we thought that we were never going to get more Star Wars movies. Now, if you watch that famous interview with Mark Hamill during the 90s, where he's talking about George Lucas's original idea for the new films or what would have been his version of the new films. He at one time said, would you consider playing an Obi-Wan type character handing Excalibur down to the 
next generation. I said, when that, would that be? And at the time, he said, around, all around 2011. There was always the chance that those could have happened, but I think at the time, most people believed that there would never be more Star Wars movies. But Thrawn's new canonical history borrows a little bit from that original backstory in those novels. Dave Filoni changed a couple things just to fit him in the new canon. But Thrawn was originally an officer in the Chiss Ascendancy naval fleet. He was always a brilliant strategist. In the Chiss race rules most of this part of space in the unknown regions right beyond the border of the Outer Rim. He met Anakin Skywalker during the Clone Wars and then during the galactic reorganization from the Republic into the Empire after Revenge of the Sith, he determined that an alliance with the Emperor was the best course of action to benefit the Chiss people long term. So playing the long game of chess, make all the Chiss puns that you want. So the Emperor really wanted as much knowledge of the unknown regions as possible so he wanted the maps that the Chiss people had and he recognized what a brilliant strategist Thrawn was. Then he assimilates into Imperial society and becomes a member of the Imperial Navy, quickly rising through the ranks. All of his campaigns were successful, so just one big win right after the other. He eventually gains command of the first fleet in his Star Destroyer Chimera. He starts going on missions with Darth Vader, who he knew before he became Darth Vader when he was still Anakin Skywalker. Darth Vader was actually the reason why he started using the force dampening E. Salamiri so that he had some way to keep him in check when they were serving together on campaigns so that he would not also be force choked into oblivion. He was promoted to the rank of Grand Admiral by the Emperor. There were 12 total Grand Admirals during the Emperor's reign. Grand Admiral is a military rank though. Grand Moff, like Grand Moff Tarkin, was a civilian governor of the over sector of space that covered a number of different sectors. Each sector of space, which contains a number of systems, a number of worlds, was controlled by a moth. And there were about 20 moths total during the Imperial era. So Moff Gideon was one of those 20 moths at the end of that era. His sector of space that he was in charge of was obviously the one where the Mandalorian series mostly takes place here in the Outer Rim. So within the hierarchy of the Empire, Grand Admiral Thrawn would be one of the few people more powerful or higher up than Moff Gideon. There is no Grand Moff after the fall of the Empire. There was a member of the Imperial fleet named Rand who promoted himself to Grand Moff after the destruction of the second Death Star in the Aftermath novels. Technically those are canon. Cobb Vanth, who we met during episode one wearing Boba Fett's armor, he's a character from the Aftermath novel. But the Grand Moff Rand character basically fled in an escape pod after his Super Star Destroyer was blown up in the Battle of Jakku. So he's not in power anymore. He's not a threat during the events of the Mandalorian series. The reason why Thrawn didn't die during the Battle of Endor, the reason why you didn't see him during the original trilogy of movies is because during Star Wars Rebels, right before the events of A New Hope, Ezra Bridger uses the Space Whale's ability to navigate hyperspace naturally to take Thrawn and his fleet deep into the unknown regions where they won't know how to navigate because there are no hyperspace maps and they won't be a threat to the Rebellion anymore because Thrawn is one of those S-tier villains powerful enough and smart enough to outfox the entire Rebellion and New Republic. So that's why at the end of the Star Wars Rebels finale, right after the Battle of Endor and Return of the Jedi, in that end credit scene tag, Ahsoka Tano comes to pick Sabine Wren up, another Mandalorian by birth by the way, so that they could head into the unknown regions and look for Ezra Bridger because he was lost with Thrawn for all those years of the original trilogy. So now that we know that Ahsoka has come back from the unknown regions because she's in the Outer Rim, the Mandalorian is taking Baby Yoda to see her. It implies that she was successful in finding Ezra with Sabine, and if Ezra was last seen with Thrawn, it also probably means that Thrawn survived in the unknown regions this entire time too. You also have to keep in mind that the Chiss Ascendancy don't control the entire unknown regions, but they do have a lot more knowledge of them than other races of the galaxy. So of all the military leaders in the galaxy, all the most powerful people, Thrawn would be uniquely suited to survive out there, even if he started in a part of space that was still unmapped. The reason why that's such a big deal, by the way, is because you can't travel through hyperspace without the precise mapping calculations. Otherwise, you'd fly through a planet or a star or a ship and you'd be vaporized instantly. There really isn't any canonical story right now for exactly what Thrawn has been doing for the past several years between A New Hope and the events of the Mandalorian series. But in the original novels, the explanation that they gave for how he survived the fall of the Empire was that he was on a mission for the Emperor mapping the unknown regions. So pretty much in both versions of this story, the Disney canon, the pre-Disney Legends EU canon, he spends all the time between the original trilogy of movies out in the unknown regions mapping hyperspace routes and gathering power before he returns. 
So the theory is, is that we'll see him return in the live action series to be another big bad between the events of Return of the Jedi and the new Star Wars movies before the First Order and Palpatine return. There's a whole period of about 25 years for the Mandalorian series and any other new series set during this part of the timeline to play in without having to change anything big that they've established before. And the way they explain Luke Skywalker, Leia, the New Republic during episode 4 this past week is that the people of the core worlds where the bulk of the New Republic lives, the main body, don't really pay much attention or mind to what's happening in the Outer Rim. Like they don't believe that Moff Gideon is a thing, they just don't care about any of the people in the Outer Rim. Which as you would expect provides a lot of opportunity for these larger characters like Moff Gideon, Grand Admiral Thrawn, any other villains they want to introduce to come in and seize power to try and mount another campaign to reunify the galaxy under a new empire. And if they decide to hold off on Thrawn and the Mandalorian series they could always introduce him in one of the other live action series with more of the Star Wars Rebels characters like live action Ezra, live action Sabine if they don't also appear on the Mandalorian eventually. But post all your theories in the comments, when do you think that we'll see a live action version of Thrawn show up first? I've got a couple other bonus videos, but my full Mandalorian Season 2 Episode 5 video will post on Friday just like normal. While you wait for that, click here for my brand new Mandalorian Season 2 Ahsoka Tano video to learn what she's been doing this whole time, and click here for my full Mandalorian Season 2 Episode 4 video. Thank you so much for watching, everyone stay safe, I'll see you guys tonight.